A Fox News alert happening right now. Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un are meeting in Russia. The North Korean leader declaring his, quote, full and unconditional support for Moscow's assault on Ukraine. You're watching Fox and Friends First here on a Wednesday morning on Todd Pyro. And I'm Carly Shimkus. The world is watching for a possible arms deal between these two dictators as Russian bombs fall on Ukraine and North Korea test launches more ballistic missiles off its eastern coast. Lucas Tylinson is live in Washington with the very latest. Lucas. Well, good early morning, Carly and Todd. First, it was Russia going to North Korea looking for more ammunition to conduct its war in Ukraine after draining its stockpiles. Now, it's North Korean leader Kim Jong-un going to Vladimir Putin in Siberia to learn more about Russian rocket technology and a sign of deepening ties. Kim called North Korea's relationship with Russia a, quote, first priority. It's not clear what China thinks about that. The Russian and North Korean leaders met at a remote Siberian rocket launch facility after Kim Jong-un boarded his armored train to leave the Hermit Kingdom for the first time in years. Recall when NASA ended its shuttle program in 2011, it was the United States that relied on Russia to send astronauts to the International Space Station. The meeting between the two leaders took place hours after North Korea fired two ballistic missiles into the sea. In the last two years, North Korea has launched over 80 short, intermediate, and long-range missiles. Kim Jong-un understands the value of having nuclear weapons and seeks Russia's help in developing complex military spy satellites, guys, something North Korea lacks. It's failed, in fact, on its recent attempts to put one in orbit. When asked about deepening military cooperation between Pyongyang and Russia, Russia's president said, quote, we will talk about all issues without a rush. There is time. Gordon Chang offered his perspective on the rare meeting last night on Fox News at Night. You think that Kim Jong-un wouldn't want to sort of ruffle the waters because he probably wanted to be able to meet Putin and not have anyone trying to impose costs on him. And by firing this missile, what he's done is he's attracted even more attention to what is a really dangerous meeting between the North mm -hmm. Korean and Russian leaders. Meantime, we're which is probably the goal, of course. Putin welcomed Kim with a handshake that lasted 40 seconds. It's rare for Kim Jong-un to be outside his hermit kingdom, guys. Yeah, a 40-second handshake is definitely dedication to the cause there. And you called this a, a rare meeting. It certainly is. Do you know the last time Kim Jong-un left North Korea and met face-to-face -face with a foreign leader? It's been over four years, Carly, just to show how rare this is. Some of that has to do with COVID. Another part, they don't call it the hermit kingdom for nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kim Jong-un usually sits there. Yeah, absolutely. Lucas, thank you so Thanks, much Lucas. for the very latest on that. We're also getting some headlines from this lunch that they're in right now. We actually also have the menu. Uh, they are dining on duck, fig salad, crab dumplings, sturgeon, and beef, and a choice of Russian wines. More importantly is, of course, what is being said. Kim Jong-un just told Vladimir Putin, I propose a toast to Putin's health. If you recall, in the beginning of the of Russia's war in Ukraine, there were concerns over Vladimir Putin's health and where he stood on that from. Kim Jong-un also just told Vladimir Putin, we are sure that Russia's army and people will win against evil. But of course, the main headline is North Korea vowing full and total support of Russia's sacred fight. He said that after he viewed a launch pad in Russia. And you're looking at the video of that viewing of the launch pad right now. So the question, Carly, becomes why? Why is this happening? Why is this happening now? And the answer can be pinned on the Biden administration. If you remember, Donald J. Trump received a lot of flack for engaging Kim Jong-un. But the way he engaged was saying, look, you do something, you're gone. It was pretty point blank. Biden has sort of forgotten about Kim Jong-un and a couple things about that. One, Kim Jong-un likes to be in the spotlight. So when you quote unquote forget about them, he gets a little upset. Second, it gave him time to sort of think how he was going to rattle the United States. And this Russian provocation in Ukraine provided the perfect opportunity. I had the opportunity on Mornings with Maria yesterday to interview General Keith Kellogg. And I hesitated to use the phrase access of evil hearkening back to World War II. And he said, no, no, there is an axis of evil forming Without right question. now. And it is these countries yeah. that are part of it. And that needs to be highly concerning. Also, one more point. If the Biden administration had acted with sanctions with teeth with regard to all of these rogue actors, they would not have been allowed to come together and sort of circumvent the eastern-western sanctions that we had placed on them. 
What you're seeing right now is that circumvention, and it is rendering so much of the actions, the feckless actions the Biden administration yeah. took, to be toothless. Yeah, that axis of evil, China, Iran, North Korea, and Russia. And Mike Pompeo, Pompeo said, let's be clear here, this meeting between Kim Jong-un and, and Putin does not happen without China giving it the green light. Donald Trump couldn't talk to North Korea without China first approving that as well. And uh, keep in mind, this is the deal. Russia wants to be able to stay in a fight with Ukraine, Ukraine, so they're asking for North Korean weapons there. And North Korea is interested. Just a casual grocery list of items here. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear-capable ballistic missile submarines, and military reconnaissance satellites. So uh, this is a big deal, and it's playing out right now. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.